Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today, yeah, we're, we're still in Cura, and yes, we're still talking about supports. If you've missed my other videos, I'll just randomly start throwing them up there. I don't know if you've noticed this, but all of the support videos that I've done for Cura so far have nothing to do with actually holding your models up yet. You would think, how can he do this many videos without even actually telling us how to hold the models up? Yeah, yeah. I was just waiting to see if anybody would say anything. But guess what? Today I'm actually going to talk about that. I am actually going to be talking about your support interface. Your roof support interface. What actually holds your model up. Our roof interface and our floor interface. What is an interface? <laughs> they named it a funny name so it get, makes you confused. The interface actually interfaces with your 3D printed part. There you go. I should be done now, now that you've gotten that. Man, I am a good teacher. All right, so I gotta give you this one disclaimer before we really get into the meat of this video. A little secret about me is I am, well, how do I say this? Extremely dyslexic when it comes to numbers. I superimpose numbers all the time, and if there's a decimal point in one spot, I'll move it over and I'll say something completely wrong. And if along the way we might keep hearing the number 3.5 millimeters and you see written on a post-it it says 0.35 millimeters, trust the post-it, don't trust what I'm saying because I screwed that up multiple times after I went back and edited this video. Hence, that this is why you're getting this little disclaimer from me. I'm sorry, I'm not perfect, but <sighs> my supports are perfect. That was, uh, that was pretty good. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, I thought they'd like that. <laughs> All right, so we are back in Cura and back talking about supports. And if you're just now joining me, you have missed a couple videos, and I strongly advise you to go back to the beginning of this series where I'm just talking about supports in Cura and how to get the best supports. We discussed how you can find your support overhang angle because you don't want to just use what I have. You have to find what works for your printer. And I'll put that video right up top here. The other thing is I talked about all of those general settings that I always look for and I'm always tweaking per model. I help you understand what those settings are, what those settings do, and then you understand what you need to change when you see those supports failing on you. Then in the last video, I discussed support brim, and that's all about getting your supports to stick to that bed a lot better. Now in this video, we are only talking about our support interface, the most important and most crucial part of your supports how it interacts with your actual printing model, whether that is a support being printed on top of your model, or if that support is being printed for your model to print onto, which is what most people are used to. So that is all about support interface, and those are floors and roofs, and that is what we're gonna be discussing today. Now the one thing I will tell you if you do not have the settings that I have, I have already shown you how to do this in other videos, but really quickly, I will jump over to my preferences. You click on your preferences, you go into settings, and then you scroll all the way down here to your supports, and then once you actually have your supports, you go ahead and you can check every single box, and then it will show up in your menu. Then once you have them all checked, just hit close, and ta-da, you have a lot of options now. So today, you want to scroll all the way down to enable support interface, but what we're going to do is enable support floor first. We're not just going to click support interface. One thing I will tell you is you do not want to just enable support interface and have the exact same settings for your roof and your floor. 
your roof settings and your floor settings are always going to be different. And I'll say that again, your roof settings and your floor settings for your interface are always going to be different. There is no way that they will ever be the same and you're going to get amazing results with them being the same. Now that being said, you can have them the exact same settings, but one of them will always turn out okay and then the other one will turn out like garbage and vice versa, depending on what your settings might be. We're going to go through a bunch of tests like I did in the beginning of this Cura series showing you what the printer actually is doing. So for now, what we're going to do is actually just mess with our floor supports. Now there's a few things I want to just show you here, but then we're going to jump over somewhere else and I'm going to explain this a lot better for you so you really understand it. Your floor thickness is basically how thick your interface is going to be. So you have your floor density, and that is the percentage of what your zigzag is going to be printing, or at least my zigzag from your floor pattern. Then you have your floor line distance. This is completely determined by your density. I never change this, I just let it automatically change for when I change my density. Minimum support area, that means there has to be 10 millimeters, a square 10 millimeters for this to actually print. So imagine that this shape is only this size of this little square and that is 10 millimeters. If it's smaller than that, it will not print a support. But if it's bigger than this, it will print a support. That's essentially what it's telling you. And so these are the main things I wanted to discuss today. We've got our pattern, distance, density, and thickness. And then the other thing we're going to talk about is our support Z distance. And this is our top distance and our bottom distance. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice this so you can see what I'm talking about right now. Now, we've got all of these wonderful colors. All right, so we have our actual model, we have our interface, which is this blue, and then we have just our regular support, which is cyan. I'm gonna jump over here, and I have already made a model of this so we can better understand what this is actually doing because this is super important and I feel like just showing some settings and printing some models are not gonna really help you. So we all know when we need supports because if this wasn't here, it would come out and then it would just droop off the nozzle and then it would just keep doing this and it would be an absolute stringy mess like so. And we've all come to these and that is why we add supports because now we actually have something for it to print on. And there are two different types of supports. There are supports that come off of our bed, so this is off of our bed, and it, our support prints on the bed, comes all the way up, makes an interface, and then the model prints on top of the support. Then the second type is our model is printed, a support is printed on top of our model, then the support is completely finished, and then the model is printed on top of the support. When they're printed on our bed like this, it never actually has an interface floor. An interface is only when it's touching a model. So you'll only have a roof because the model will only be touching the support on the top. Now for the second type, we have a support on a model. That is when we're going to need this interface. And this interface right here is this blue part. And this blue part, as you can see, has four lines. Now we're printing our model at a 0.1 millimeter resolution. So every single layer is 0.1 millimeters high. Now if I have a 0.4 millimeter resolution interface, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to print four layers. Now if I jump over, now here's Kira, and if I zoom in here, so if you come in here, you can see that there are four lines here. One, two, three, four. That is our floor interface. So here's our enable floor support. I have it checked. Our support floor thickness, 0.4. 
So there are four lines here. Now, why would you want a thick interface? And why would you want a thin interface? Here's the questions you need to ask yourself. Is there a lot of texture on my model? If the model has a lot of texture, you're going to want a thicker interface. So imagine that this red is your texture and it's very bumpy. And then I have a 0.4 millimeter thickness of my interface. So that is four lines all connecting. Now with these four lines, I'm essentially making a shell so it can all conform and mold into this one piece that sets on top of my model. Now if I have it as a 0.1 millimeter thickness, you can imagine at every single layer change, it's going to be printing just this little piece and part. There's not going to be really any connection besides to this main support itself. But sometimes the support won't fully stick to it in one little piece. So say if it dips down, it might miss right here. That is why having a thicker interface can really help you by creating this shell that you can peel off and it comes off a lot easier instead of having little pieces and parts that you got to keep picking off. So let's just jump back over to Cura. Now if I did change this to point 0.1, I could slice this and you could see that I only have one line right here and that's it. But we are going to put this back to point 0.4. And remember, when you see that orange in Cura, that means, hey, you're kind of out of the parameters of what you should be doing. And it is perfectly fine to just commit that and say, yep, that's what we're doing, I don't care. Cura is just trying to remind you what the best practices are. So let's go back to point four because I like four lines of thickness. And that is what we're gonna go with. Now, the next question is, what is our distance from our model to our actual interface? And that is where we're going to scroll up to the top here, and then we are going to go to support Z distance, and then the support bottom distance. Now, if I put this at a point one and sliced it, you can see that there is going to be a very thin gap here because each one of these lines is 0.1. So it's basically skipping a, a line and then it'll still print this interface. Now, I don't know what my perfect Z distance is. So we're going to have to print out a few different ones. So I'm going to go ahead and print these only changing our support bottom distance and that is our Z distance. I'm going to go ahead and slice up these different heights for our Z distance only on our bottom distance. So we can see what is the perfect distance between my model and my interface. Let me slice these up and we will hit print on them. Okay, so I now have all of my test prints done for my Z distance. So this is only my Z distance, and that is with a 50% density for my floor. So you can see the crosshatch, the zigzag pattern right there, and we're only talking about the Z density. So this is a point one and this is a 0.4 so you're going to be able to see those distances so the big thing here is how easy these rip off because that's the whole thing of how easy can we get these supports off so i'm going to go ahead and take my pliers and i am going to give this a scale rating to see how well they come off so the first one is a 0.1 distance So it came off pretty well, but all of these little lines are still on there. These lines are hard to get off, and I would give this probably a 2 out of 5 just because of these lines. Like, I, if I work real hard, I might be able to get it all off, but I'm not going to mess with it because it's difficult. So now I've got the 0.2. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and pull her off. 
and wow, that came off nicely. So you can see here, with hardly anything, it just came off. Uh, there are a few here. Let me see. Stuck a little well. Wow, there it is. That is super clean. I would give that a four. So a point two works out really well. So that is a four out of five. Now we're gonna go to 2.5 and you can see that the actual infill density is not that pretty for the interface, but we're gonna see. So I'm just gonna take it. And there it is. So just rubbing my fingers over it. It's coming off pretty easily. And that is just as clean. So that one actually was just as nice. So I would say that's a four because I still had to scratch pretty hard on it to get a few of those nicks off. So we know that these right here, these settings are pretty good. So next is the point three. Let's see. Same thing, came off really easily. You can see that the support pattern right there and let's see, me just rubbing it. That one was actually a lot easier, So, but I will still say that's a four. It wasn't just the most easy thing to rip off because I still had to rub it a little bit, but, and there's a nick right there. So yeah, and here we go, 3.5. And wow, so that was easy. He saw how easy I just grabbed that and it came right off. No rubbing, no nothing. And this looks beautiful. The infill pattern looks, you know, okay. So that one, you know what? I'm going to give it a five. So 3.5 is a good height. Now let's try the four. All right, that came off super easy. And let's see about this. It's stuck a little bit right there, but I tell you what, this is super clean and super nice. I gotta compare it now to this one. Now, I would say that these are both fives, honestly. I've got a five, so between 3.5 and four are perfect. So I guess looking at how this printed, I would say the 3.5 actually printed better um, when it came with this in support interface. So I think 3.5 is the number for me. So now we have determined that 0.35 is our best support Z distance for our bottom distance. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. There we go, so we only see our interface. Now we need to figure out what our best density is going to be. So this is, so for our floor density, it's at right now at 10, and we'll show you what it looks like at 25. So when we increase this, you can see if I set this to 90, it's essentially a full sheet that we're printing out. That means more filament for us as well. So I don't know what is going to be the best interface for me. So I am going to go ahead and print out a few differences of my density. So now we know the floor distance is 0.35 and that was the perfect distance for our supports for our floor. So now we need to find the perfect interface density. I've already printed at a 0.35 Z distance for all of these now that I have my best distance. So I have 5, 10, 25, 50, 75, and 90 because there's no reason to go to 100% when you're at 90 because honestly it's, it's a lot of filament. Now we're going to pull these off and see which one will get us our best results. So at 5%, I'm just going to say that this one was terrible because it didn't even fully stick. 
So we need something that's going to stick to be able to give ourselves a good support because this could have failed easily. And peeling this off like exactly what I expected, it's going to be just fine. Uh, this is good as in it comes off easy, but this is bad that it did not actually stick to the print good enough to be able to make the supports nice and clean. So this one, I'm going to rate it a one. There we go. One out of five. Now this one did a pretty decent job. The supports are a little messed up, but only at the bottom and it was able to correct itself. So let's see here. Can I do it with my fingers? Oh, look at that. That actually was really nice. 10% was a beautiful. This is a beautiful print. I can't even tell that there was something on there. That, in my eyes, is a 5. Alright, so now we have 25. It's coming off. You gotta rub it a little bit. But it all comes off really easily. That, for ease of ripping it off, uh, I would still give that a 5. It didn't take much, and I didn't even have to use a tool. So, that one gets a 5 as well. Alright, now we're going to try 50. Can I get it with my just fingers? No. Alright, here we go. Let's get some pliers. Okay, so it came off pretty easily. I did have to rip it off with pliers, though. My fingers would not do it. And a little bit of rubbing. And it's perfectly clean. I would give this a 4 because it is stuck to it pretty hard, but it did come off. Let's see if I can get this one off. No. 75%. Well, that came off pretty easily, but there's a lot of supports there. Well, there are some goobs here that I cannot get off. I'd have to either scratch them off really hard. There's one of them. Yeah. So, that one didn't come off super easy. Um, there is some pieces here that are stuck, so it, it's looking like the higher density is not going to work as well. I'm going to give that a 3, just because this is the first one we've had stuff stick to, because we know our height is good. Alright, 90%. 90 came off really easily. Wow. And there was only a little piece right there. I'm surprised that 90% worked out so well. Um, for a flat surface, yes, this is probably great. Um, but honestly, for a surface with a lot of texture, I don't know if I'd want this. All right, so now this is a flat surface. And I guess that is something that should be said about all of this, is the flat surfaces, of course, this is going to work out really well, and I'm going to be able to peel these off. But when it comes to angled surfaces, any kind of texture or anything, it is going to be a lot harder. So you might actually want to consider a lesser infill. But if you have a flat surface and you really want some strong infills to have a good foundation, maybe 90% is good. Because I would also say for me, this would be a 4. Just because... I could see how this would stick really hard to some prints, and I had to use pliers. I couldn't just take it off with my hands. But this came off no problem at 10%. I think 10% is my best inter interface density. So 10% is where it's at for me, but I could go up to 25%. That's what this means right here. I actually found my gap. I understand that anywhere between 10% and 25% when it comes to the density of my interface, that is going to be pretty good for me. So if there's a lot of detail, I might want to crank this up a little bit, but if there isn't, maybe I can have it down at 10. And the best part is, I could actually just meet myself in the middle here too. If it's 10% and 25%, you know, maybe 18% is where I want to be.
So now we know all of the floor settings. I know my Z distance and I know my density. So I now know my settings for my specific printer on my enders. Now that we have that set, we're ready to move on to getting our roofs. All right, so for the settings that we just did, we know that this is all correct for my bottom support interface. I have four millimeters of thickness. The distance is 0.35 millimeters for my Z distance. My density for my in interface is 10% to 25%. Anywhere between here was really good. So I am fine with anything between here. Okay, so now we have to figure out the top part of our model. Now these are the things that we know are still true. We still want the same thickness for our roof interface and our model is still the exact same now when it comes to the density and the distance we are going to do the exact same thing now we don't know what this distance is going to be for down here we're letting gravity just fall on here just enough for the interface to stick to our model but not adhere and get a really good adhesion to it we just want it to stick to it what we really want is we want this interface as close as we physically can get it without making it actually adhere to the model and the support we still need to break them off so there still needs to be a gap here we just don't know what that gap is. It's going to be a lot tighter of a gap than it will be here. Because if we have a very large gap for our roof, the bottom of our print is going to look really messy and it will look a little stringy depending on what we're actually printing. And if you have a lot of texture and things like that, you could lose that texture. So I have this model right here where it's essentially a huge overhang to where we're going to be able to see what our interface is going to do here. So you can see right here that we don't have any interface right now, so we're going to have to scroll down and we're going to enable support roof. Now if we slice it, you can see that interface right there. Now, we need to figure out what is the perfect distance first. So I will go to my roof density and I am going to set this to 50%. Something right in the middle of the road, as you can see there, it's at 50%. So I am going to try this on all of the different numbers to see how far or how close we can get and get a really good print of this model. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these sliced and printed and then we can jump to the table. So now that we set, I set up all of those different settings for our roof Z distance, I have them all printed out here now for us to test them. So I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35. I did have all the way up to 0.4, but the problem is this one actually failed on me. This was too big of a gap and I could not get a good enough adhesion. So this one automatically out. It did not do a good job and I would not accept a print like this. So we know 3.5 is too much for my printer. Now remember, you're going to have to test some of these settings on your own. So we're gonna go ahead. We know that this is a fail, so it's gotta be somewhere between here and here. Let's go ahead and try to remove this from the point one and see if that is good. And I can't do that with my fingers. So we're going to use some pliers and we might not be able to get it. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, so this one's a one. The interface is actually at a 50% and I cannot actually get this off. It is sealed to it too well. So this one right here gets a one. Not very good at all. 
Moving on to two, let's try it. Wow, a little hard to get off. It did pull hard, but this is super clean. Very, very, very clean. None of the interface is actually on here. Um, it all came off pretty cleanly. So this is actually a good setting right here. I would, it was hard to pull though. So let's say I'm gonna give this a four, okay? The edges of the model are really nice. It actually didn't peel up or anything. So we're going to give this one a four. Just because of how hard it was to pull off. I want to find something really easy to pull off. All right, so now we have the .25. And let's try that. And that came off really well. A little too well. Um... If we're gonna compare, you can see how this actually was too far of a print. It did not print clean as this one did, so point two might be where we're at. Even though I rated it at a four when it came to pulling it off, it stuck really well and I've got good layers. This one, I do not have good layers. Look at all that separation. I can just assume that this is going to get worse, and I bet you I can, with my fingers, pull this off. Yep. And it came off pretty easily. No interface, which is important, but still, this one's just a little bit worse than the other one. So this is our 3, this is our 2.5. So you can see it did not print very well. And our corners, if you look at our corners of how they actually are, if I can focus, you see how they're rounded? They rounded off because we didn't get a good solid edge of adhesion to supports. So, I would give these a rating of a 3 each. It actually printed a good interface and it came off easy. Like, that was the requirements here. Not about how clean this was. So, we are going to go ahead and look down the path of a 0.2 roof Z distance because that, I tell you what, that looks really good. All right, so we have figured out that 0.2, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there. 0.2 is the support top distance that I need for my printer. So that works out really good. What is that interface density that really works out for my roofs? So I'm going to go ahead and try a few different ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice these up, then we can head to the table after they're printed and we can see which is the best with that 0.2 Z distance. Now we actually had to figure out what our density is for our interface. So the last one I did was at a 50%. So these two are going to be honestly exactly the same print. But I wanted to go through and do a density of 10%, 25, 50, 75, and 90%. I'm gonna go ahead just like the, the way I've been doing it and rip these off and kind of rate them to see how easy they come off and how clean it is. So that right there came off beautifully but as I would think here you can see the actual model itself the first layer just did not print that well it's very sloppy just because it did not have a lot of surface area to print on even though it doesn't stick to it it still uses this surface area so I figured that the lower value was going to do this and here I can give you a closer look here and you can really see that how it looks and it's just honestly it's not that great I would give this maybe a 2 yes it did do what we wanted but it's not super clean now let's move to the next 25 percent there we go 
That actually popped off really clean and nothing stuck sticking to the actual print. I'm very happy with that. And looking at this, this is just a little bit better than this, but still the pattern here of the very first layer is kind of sloppy, I guess is a good word for it. You can see right around the edges and things like that. It just doesn't look as clean as it could be. So I would probably give this a three because yes, it is a little cleaner than the other one. And the 50%, we know what this is going to be like. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. And that is nice. I, Looking at it here, you can see that the print is a lot cleaner than in comparison to, say, let's say the 10%. You see how the differences of the line quality and things like that. Around the corners is where you can really tell. But, yeah like this overlapping here. 50% is really nice, and I would give this, honestly, a four. It's not absolutely perfect, but it is really nice. And that's at a 50% interface. Now let's go to 75. Let's see if this actually comes off. And, hmm. Peeling it off. Oh, there we go. Alright, that was a little challenging to get off, but it still came off really clean. Nothing sticking to the actual print itself. And let's check it in comparison to this is 50%. This is the 75. And honestly, they both look very similar. I don't see a difference between them. And honestly, I'd still give this a four. It was harder to get off, but it's still just as clean. And five, to me, would be I could peel it off really easily and the print looks beautiful on, on the bottom. So let's go ahead, peel that off. That came off very easily. But you can see the top part of this is basically just like like the top of this. So it actually has enough to print onto. 90% is pretty good. Now, looking at the print itself, I would say it did not print as cleanly. You can see here, some of the edges just don't look as pretty as it did for the 75 and 50% 50, 50 so if you see this is the 75 percent it doesn't have some of those ugly edges right here like the 90 does it's kind of hard because it did come off really easily but i would probably give this a 3.5 just because it's not as perfect and i don't want to make it seem like yes it would be a four but it's not as good as the 50 and 75 so the only issue between the 50 and 75 is the 50 came off very easily. The 75 was a little harder to get off, but when you're really looking at the comparisons here, you cannot tell a difference. And really when it comes to your interface, you want to be able to have a high enough density so stuff your models can print to it, but without sticking to it. We figured out what my perfect height is, but you're going to have to figure out your perfect height. I would say anywhere between 50 and 75% would be a perfect range for me. So my range for my interface density for my roof would be anywhere from 50% to 75%. So now that we know all of the different settings for our, our floors and our roofs, we can be able to make a perfect test print now. So I'm going to go ahead, jump over into Cura, and get that set up. So through this long process, we finally figured out what our perfect support settings are for when it's touching the model on both ends, your roof and your floor. So looking at this, here are the settings that I determined for my Ender 3 that works the best. My support bottom Z distance, or my floor, is at 0.35 millimeters. 
That is the spacing between the model and the bottom of the interface. My density of my interface is anywhere between 10% and 25%. When it comes to the thickness, I just stuck with the 0.4 millimeter thickness. I didn't play with this too much because I know just from experience, you need to have somewhat of a thick interface for your interface to truly work well. So I have a 0.4 millimeter thickness. And that is on the floor, and that is also on the roof. When it came to the roof settings, a 0.2 millimeter Z distance for the top support worked the absolute best for me. Then for the density of my interface, anywhere between 50% and 75%. That was the percentage that really worked out for me and gave me a good result of my printed model from above. So now that we know all of our settings, I have actually already applied them and sliced this model right here. This gives me a good floor and roof, and it also gives me a nice overhang that is just attached to the bed. This shows the two different types of supports that you can have. Like I said in the beginning, ones that touch the bed of your 3D printer, and ones that set on your 3D model and supports printed off of your model. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that and then we are going to be done. Okay, so we have this officially printed with all of our new settings. So hopefully, now I do say hopefully, all of this is gonna come off beautifully. So we will see. Now already I can't get that off, excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into my supports like I always do. Oh, look at that. That thing popped off beautifully. And let's look. How's my overhang? I would say that that's a success. That is a pretty overhang. For being completely supported, I think that did a great job. So now the biggest question here. My floors and my roofs. How well did it turn out? So let's see. What? Look at that. Seriously, I was able to rip this out. That is a perfect floor. Perfect. Nothing that attached to it. And this top is just as nice as this. So let's see if we can get in there. You see it? And then look at that. So this was a very successful print and essentially it looks like I just made a chair. So this is a chair now, that's what this is. So there we go, we finally made it through all of our support settings for our floors and roofs. So I know that that was a long video, we covered a lot, but I really wanted you to understand what you need to know to be able to get those right settings. Because I don't wanna just tell you what the settings are, I wanna educate you on how to get those settings. But, I'm a nice guy, I am going to just throw them up on the screen right here. And these are the settings that I came up with through this video. This is how I got my perfect support settings. I have used these supports on a few other prints and they have worked pretty darn well for me. <laughs> I bet you're thinking now that you have all those settings that we are done with Cura and especially done with Cura supports and you would be dead wrong. I am not done talking about Cura supports. We're gonna do one more video. One more. I am going to explain to you how you can print less filament to help you out and also how to tackle some of those troublesome supports, the really thin ones and what to do about that. Those are going to be the next things where we're going to talk about in the next video because I I can't, gotta get out of Cura. I love teaching you guys stuff but I gotta paint something. It's It's been weeks of just Cura. I, Look, look at all of these. I have all of these. I I want to paint something cool. You, I have a Spider-Man printed over there. I want to paint. But yeah, the next video is right there. It'll it'll be cool. Uh, 
supports. Why can't somebody ask me how do I paint a Spider-Man instead of how do I...